All right, guys, we're going to talk about the DPF filter. It's a topic of a lot of discussion, but we really don't have to be concerned with it when it's working properly. It just takes care of itself. But if you want to know a little bit more about how it works and look at some passive and active regens, then stick around. Or I should say the diesel particulate filter. And it works in conjunction with the diesel oxidation catalyst, which is just upstream of this thing. And between the two of them, it gets rid of the carbon generated by the exhaust, or as we know it, soot. On each side of this thing, there's a sensing line that goes up to a pressure switch, a differential pressure switch. And when the pressure gets to a certain point, we start getting a little diesel dribbling into our exhaust. Oxidation takes place in the DOC and the DPF, and the soot is burned off. So I'm constantly recording all the parameters coming out of my PCM on my truck. So I've got a lot of data I can share, towing, local, etc. So I think that's the best way to see how this thing works, is just to take a look at the data that I've recorded. So there's two ways to burn this soot off. One is what they call a passive regeneration, which is going on all the while that we're driving. It's just from the natural heat of the engine. And by the book, that can start around 392 degrees Fahrenheit, but in reality, whatever little bit of soot is being burnt off at that temperature, it's not nearly enough to, to help or to do anything. So in this example, I was running empty on the highway, and there's some variation of speeds, a little stopping, taking off again, and that's why you see that temperature kind of wavering up there. My exhaust temperature wasn't steady. But nonetheless, you can see over here on the left where it says start. We started with a 76.1% DPF trigger percentage. And that's a calculation that's generated by the PCM. And over on the right hand side, you can see where I have end. We ended up with 71.8. So in the course of all oh, that 48 minutes or so, we got just a little bit of soot burnt. Not enough to write home, home about, but you know, once you get up there around 700 degrees or so, you usually get a little bit of help there, or if nothing else, kind of remain neutral. I would say it's probably a wash here between 76 and 71. And that's true for when I'm towing also. I really don't see any significant soot being burnt until I get above 900 degrees exhaust temperature. Now this exhaust temperature you're looking at here is the DPF outlet. That is not the exhaust temperature out of the turbo. But after a few minutes they're one and the same. So when you're towing, you got more heat, but you're also generating more soot, so it kind of works against you. This is an active regeneration. You can see the two lines I got there is the exact point that it started. You can see that red line starts ramping up all the way up to about 1109 degrees. And you can see that end line where it stopped. And that took about 17 minutes now. As I said, that's an active regeneration. So you say, well, how do you know that was where it started and stopped? Well, there's a dead giveaway. And that's the EGR valve. If you notice that green squiggly line there, that's the EGR doing its thing. But you can see between those two lines, that green line is sitting on the axis down there because there's no EGR going on then. The valve is completely closed. Another thing I've noticed is that the timing goes to the retarded position, or in other words, it's firing after top dead center during the regen. I'm not sure exactly why that takes place, but I suspect the EGR is closed because the EGR is cooling the exhaust temperature and when you've got a regen going on, you really don't want the exhaust being cooled. 
And to get that soot to light off with the oxidation process, it's not literally a fire, you need oxygen. And so I suspect we get more oxygen if the EGR is not operating. And this final graft is my last 10 regens that I've had. And they occurred at various different miles. On the left there is miles, and on the bottom is just a number of regens. And you can see that, in fact, the last one I had was 144 miles between the regens. And that was here all nothing but running around town, idling, etc. The more time you spend on the highway, the more distance you're going to have between the regens. Those up there, 616 and 711, that was my trip to Atlanta. I didn't have any regens going or coming back. But once, you, once I got there and dropped the trailer and started running around and doing some local traveling, well, I had a regen, but didn't have any on the way back. Now, I've gone all the way to Colorado with no regens. I've heard some people say that the regen takes place every so many minutes and that sort of thing, but it's, it's not like that. It's strictly controlled by the differential pressure of the uh, DP, DPF. So that's what I got on my truck, guys. I think most of them are probably pretty similar, but just wanted to show you that. There's been a lot of questions about it and a lot of talk about it. And it's kind of a mysterious thing sitting up there under the truck. So I hope this helps a little bit, guys. And until next time, adios.